This week on America's Greatest Otaku, we head to Salt Lake City, then Denver, and down to Dallas. I'm Stu Levy. Please join me as we continue our fascinating journey discovering otaku culture in America and searching to find who is America's Greatest Otaku. And here we are in the middle of nowhere, Winnemucca, Nevada. And what are we gonna do on the way to Salt Lake City? We're gonna choose each team's cities. I want one of you guys will be in charge of Salt Lake City, one of your teams. One of your teams will be in charge of Denver, and one of your teams will be in charge of Dallas. Team SNS, you're gonna pick your city. Dallas. All right, so Team D and D gets to pick. Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, which oh, means Denver. <laughs> now, this week is going to be our first otaku core essence. This week, we're going to be focusing on pride. An otaku has to have pride. There's a Japanese phrase a kotowaza that's part of your shugyo to learn the lesson of pride. And that is Bushiwa Kuanedo Takayoji. The samurai, even when he's hungry, holds his toothpick with dignity. So, we're gonna have a challenge. A little challenge for you guys in each of your cities that I want you as a team to do. To show your pride, you need to cosplay in a public place where there's lots of people without reacting with embarrassment and you have to be proud. That's your challenge. You guys ready? Yeah. Come battle! We'll find something. I am pretty upset I, because this is like our first like independent city and there's like, you know, there's really not much. Check it out. Your optimism makes me sad. Buddhist temple. They take everybody in. Is anyone there? All right, maybe there's another entrance. Yeah. I do know temples do close in the States, but I did not know what time this one closed. So I would say poor research on my part. There's a door right here, let's check this one. I can see inside, but I don't think we're gonna get inside. Hold on peoples, we got this. There's an open window, maybe we can just... No, we're done, we're done. We're not done? We're done. We That's can't done. give up yet. I guess in the in the back of my mind, I did know that there probably wouldn't be much, but, but I was I really was hoping to find more, and I guess there's just not much here. There's gotta be something back here. Oh, this is so smelly. Yeah, I know it's a ditch. Think about it, even if there was a back entrance, it's not like we could knock on it and ask to be let in. They're Buddhists, they don't care about breaking If there's a back entrance, it's only for the people that work here. Well, I am in pain, so I'm putting this down. Yeah, you might have wanted to leave that with the rest of the crew. Shut up. I don't feel too bad about it. I mean, it's a real quiet town. It doesn't really have the otaku feel to it, but there might be something lurking. I, don't, I still feel very optimistic that there's something, something out here that we'll find otaku related. I eat, live, and breathe Japanese culture. I go to every anime event that I can ever find. I was one of the founding members here in Salt Lake City of our anime convention, which is Anime Bonsai. I haven't spent any money on anything except for anime and manga for like the past two years. Because I have all these like anime and manga stuff. Hey everybody out there, I'm here at the Salt Lake City Library. We hear that they have an awesome manga collection, so we are here to check it out for you. Marianne Heider, 
What can you tell me about this massive collection that you have? Well, um, we started the collection uh, way back in about the year 2000, 2001. That's when we finally wow. got the approval to start a graphic novel and a manga collection. And right now we have between 4,500 and 5,000 graphic novel titles. About a quarter of that um, it represents probably all of the manga that we have. What you see on the shelf represents only about a half. People come in and they literally take armloads of, of this stuff home. We have professional people that are fans and they come in after work and they're in suits and they come and check things out. Oh, wow. Teens and young adults seem to be the largest demographic for manga and graphic novels. That's what's so marvelous about these things is they really talk to a huge amount of people. All right, there you have it, folks. Mary Ann, thank you for enlightening me on how great the manga culture is out here. I'm Diana and I am here in Salt Lake City with an America's Greatest Otaku Candidate, Serene al -Sahawi. Back in my homeland in Iraq, my first exposure to anime was um, on TV and they were all dubbed in Arabic. Grandizer, Rose of Versailles, Suzuki and all those wonderful things. They were made in 70s and 80s. Mainly just different types of mangas. I was actually the creator of the anthology. I have done the Death Note one, mm -hmm. Boku no Boki, and the short four comma of Death Note. And I also did Naruto, the four comma one, and One Piece, and of course, Oran. Oh, that's adorable. I actually have an online manga and that I've started in high school in 2004. Mm -hmm. The title is called Tiger Punch. Well, it's about this orphan boy and he's a college student. He is around 16 years old and suddenly he encounters a cat. That cat tells him that he used to be the prince of Scotland. It wasn't actually written in history and for that he has to go all the way to Scotland and change history. I've been learning Japanese since junior high. I started to learn on my own and then I took classes in high school and college. And nowadays I'm still self-learning and hopefully reach to um, JLPT Niki, which is more like a business level Japanese. I'm considering myself as America's greatest otaku. Thank you, Shireen. Is she America's greatest otaku? We'll have to find out. <laughs>